We all have um, reactions to some material. There's, you know, we're still human. You know, some of the things we see, even after all this time, is shocking. You know, and we quite often will say, I actually can't believe that someone else would do that to another human being. We quite often remind ourselves we can't, we can't help the awful things that's happened to that child. Um, but we can change their future and that's what our work does. It can be like looking for or making a puzzle um, that you don't have the picture for or the instructions and there's pieces missing um, and putting that all back together to try to find a location for those victims either in Australia or internationally and trying to you know remove them from harm and keep them safe. Our job is to review all the material seized in child sex offender um, investigations around Australia by the AFP. So we can be looking at child abuse material six, seven, eight hours a day, day in and day out. Um, but the pure motivation is finding a child that needs our help. Um, and some of those kids, this might be the only opportunity they have to be saved or to be identified and removed from further harm. So you, we don't need any more motivation then that to keep going. Child abuse material um, could be me uh, videos, can be images, it could be um, of an adult um, or another child sometimes abusing a child. Um, it could be the self-generated material that has been produced by a child either because they've been groomed, sextorted, um, they've instigated themselves. You know we see a lot of um, kids that do it and put it up on YouTube, um, you know, the stream on Instagram because they want likes, thumbs up, that sort of thing. You could spend months looking through um, one particular seizure from an investigation that has got millions um, of images in there and you might, like I said, it might be the only chance um, we have of identifying that child. This is, continues to be a growing problem, not only for us in Australia, but globally. It's a borderless crime, it's a global crime and requires global connections to combat it. But we might get referred material from a foreign law enforcement partner because they might believe that a child depicted in images they've seized is, are Australian. And that could be the opposite for us. We might commonly refer material overseas because we might believe children overseas are at risk from within those photos. We see technology evolving with end-to-end -end encryption and AI-generated child abuse material. Uh, we, we know uh, that this is something that is likely to grow for us, um, not only in Australia but internationally as well. We are seeing um, AI-generated child abuse material. Uh, so that's a, that's a challenge for us and it's a challenge for our victim identification experts because of the photorealism of that type of technology. It can, uh, I guess, challenge uh, us in terms of you know our victim identification specialists wasting time on something that might not be a real victim and taking them away from efforts that go towards removing um, real child victims from harm. It can be overwhelming you do have some of those um, seized material that is up in the millions and it just kind of gets to a point where you just keep going you get a bit overwhelmed when you first see him. I started in the triage unit when I didn't have young children and have since have two children and they're both still young so I have a six and a four year old. They obviously we need to be able to separate our work life from our home life and you can't always do that there's always going to be a little bit of bleed over. There are times where my kids you know I might be working through material and there's you know a hundred images or thousands of images that I'm going through and unfortunately at times you will come across material for especially with young kids like mine that there are in items of clothing say that I've come across in the material at work and then my daughter has it or my son might have that particular clothing and unfortunately it goes in the bin. When you walk out the door you have to leave it behind you know I walk out that door I'm no longer Kate Lay the victim identification now I'm mum taking you to a hockey or whatever it might be um, so that certainly becomes a bit of a skill to to turn on and off and leave the work behind and let's face it you have to like if I took this work home with me day in and day out I would become very unwell very quickly so you certainly need to be able to do that um, as far as interacting with my children probably um, the biggest thing if you ask them how does that impact them is that they're very well educated about being safe online and you know 
know, from a very young age, from preschool age, to sit them all down and we would go through the rules. Okay, what's the first rule? And one would pipe up, you know, don't take your clothes off or whatever it might be. I sometimes wish I maybe lived in that naive world that some other people um, perhaps do, but we know the realities of things. And, you know, we've seen children in nappies that are uploading videos to YouTube and, and people are like, but they wouldn't do that. They do do it. I see it day in and day out. Sometimes you just need a break to turn your mind off from perhaps it's something that you've seen particularly that's resonating in your mind that you just need to think about something else, whether it might be doing a puzzle, we have a um, Xbox over there, table tennis, go out for a walk, all of those things um, are really important just to, I suppose, refocus and reset your brain because, like I said, I mean, that after all this time there are things that shock us there are things that stick with you you might personally relate to something for a particular reason um, and you need to have some strategies in place and proactively in place not just when you hit that crisis period something that you know you can count on when you when you're feeling like that we all do have different methods of how we get through the job, how we actually prioritise our mental health, but it is one of the main things you need to do. You have to have that awareness personally um, of how your mental health is going, knowing that it is a job, that we do it for a reason and we're very passionate about it. It is an uncomfortable conversation, you know, starting off a conversation in regards to child abuse material. No one really wants to know about it. No one really wants to have that conversation, but unfortunately it is out there and probably more so than what people realise. So. I think people shy away from it a little bit, but I think it is important for everyone to go out and educate themselves and listen to these conversations, engage with them with their kids and really have that open dialogue back and forth.